Thank you all for being here. So um, as we have a few more people join us, if you could join our Google Classroom, if you have not already done so, um, today I'm going to have two, I actually have two assignments in our Google Classroom that um, I'm going to have you guys engage with um, from a student perspective. So you'll need to join the Google Classroom so you can have those opportunities. Um, and then also please feel, feel free to log into our next session. I'm going to run it um, so you guys can engage with me as well. So we'll go ahead and take about uh, maybe two more minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. okay, so to be respectful of your time, we will go ahead and get started. So thank you guys all again for being here. Um, I'm excited that you guys have um, come back because that means that you are finding this tool useful. So I'm grateful for you guys all being here. Um, so hopefully you guys have had a chance to join the Google Classroom. Um, here's the information if you need it and the direct links if, if you didn't get a chance to find it in the chat. And then also Tina um, has put the link code for this Pear Deck that we will be working through throughout today. So just as a quick reminder, I am recording this session, so I've already started doing that. So it will be put up into YouTube. So if you want to come back and reference something later or share it with a colleague, it will be put in paired, uh, sorry, into YouTube. And again, I am Glay Koenig um, with ILE, and my colleague Tina is here. She's managing the chat. Tina, do you want to say hello? <laughs> She's waving to everyone. Hi. It's good to see <laughs> some of you guys again. <laughs> yes, very good. Okay, so again, um, I'm grateful that you're here and these um, best practices for today is please give yourself grace. If you want to go ahead and just relax and not engage, that's great. Go ahead and you know, keep your cameras off, take notes, observe. Um, but I would love if you guys want to participate, ask questions, share your experiences, um, whatever you feel more, most comfortable with today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And um, if you guys don't mind sharing with me, what is your favorite question type in Pear Deck? Hopefully most of you guys have had a chance to use it with your students. So if you can go ahead and share with us um, what your favorite question type is so far. Okay, mostly everyone is saying draw. Very good, yeah, some of you guys are putting in the chat as well. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, actually draw is my favorite as well. I find it so nice. Um, is there anyone that would like to unmute and share um, a quick experience that you guys have had with your students um, using Pear Deck? Oh, draggables are coming up too. Okay. Okay. I I don't mind sharing. I used it yeah, right. almost every day when I taught virtual last year. And so I use it um, now at least once a unit, maybe twice. And I think it's a great way for assessment. And then also I'm in science. Okay. So to show what they know with the draw slides so they can t use text or the drawing. And so I like, I like using it. Very good. Anyone else? Okay, let's see. Okay, Grant, go ahead, raise your hand, um, unmute yourself. I'm a virtual teacher, so the draggable option is really good for kids. Um, and I teach special ed, so it's, like, it, it's, it's a more simpler way for the kids to interact and show what they know. Very good. Yeah, especially with those special ed kids to be able to engage them right there. Very good. Um, Monique, do you want to unmute yourself and share? Monique or Monica? It oh, was I'm Monica. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Monica. Go ahead. <laughs> no worries. Um, no, I'll use the draw for kind of like a brain break when, during a um, presentation. So it'll be something silly like draw a picture of an alien or whatever. And so they get to take a minute or two and just draw something goofy and they really like being able to see it. Very good. And what do you teach? I'm science as well. Science. Very good. All right. Well, thank you guys um, so much for sharing your experiences. And I'm glad to hear that your students are appreciating those as well. All right. So today's objectives are for us to um, we're going to compare, learn, create, share and explore all the wonders of Pear Deck. And um, as we dive deeper, my favorite tool to share with you guys is the immersive reader. So we're really going to dive into that today. Very excited to share that with you. 
So um, I did link here um, a copy of the Pear Deck 101. So if you didn't get a chance to join us for that, um, that link is there. It is also um, on our YouTube channel. So if you have questions about that or someone you know missed it, feel free to share with them as well. So we're going to go ahead and make our connections. We're going to talk about the difference between the Pear Deck add-on and the website. And we're going to dive into the immersive reader. We will also take a look at um, student takeaways. Um, I did at the last minute make a change. I am not going to cover the teacher dashboard because I will be doing a third Pear Deck PD um, in February. And we're going to do teacher dashboard and flashcard factory. So that is coming up. And then I'll give you guys a chance to explore and answer some questions. And of course, we want to make our connections to our 21st Learning Century and our instructional guide. And so um, this really talks about utilizing the four C's, you know, allowing our students to think critically, to communicate, and obviously problem solve. And um, Paradeck is such a great interactive piece that allows them to do all of those things. All right, so the difference between the Pear Deck add-on and the website is that um, when you are utilizing the add-on, you are starting directly from your Google Slides. And I, this is kind of a review from 101. So, um, you know, you're going into your Google Slides and you're using the add-ons. I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to explore the website, but there are a lot of opportunities for you guys to explore and do within the actual website. And so um, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to go ahead and play and look at the actual Pear Deck website. It is app.pairdeck.com. And if you click on this link, it should go ahead and open up directly for you. And um, I'll go ahead and click on that link and share it with you guys so I can kind of show you where some of the things are found. So this is the main page when you get to Pear Deck. And then you're going to go ahead and click here on your teacher login. And immediately once you log in, again, in case um, you missed it before, we are all crowned because the district has provided us with um, the premiums accounts for free. So um, that's great because we have access to things that others don't. And those things include the pop-up activities as well as the Pear Deck um, vocabulary factory or the flashcard factory is what it used to be called. Um, but these are all activities that you can um, create here on the website. If you didn't want to start within a slide or within Google Slides, you could come directly to the website and start a lesson here as well. Um, let's see, there are some also um, like uh, SEL lessons that they'll do. I actually received an email today that they said for Chinese New Year coming up, they're gonna have some um, slides that are related to that as well that you can share with your students as um, pop-up activities. So, um, I'm gonna give you guys about five minutes to go ahead and explore um, the website and see some of the opportunities that are here. And at any time, if you have questions, don't, don't hesitate to unmute yourself and ask, but I'll go ahead and give you guys that five minutes to go ahead and explore. Okay, so um, hopefully you guys have had a chance to explore some of the um, Pear Deck actual website page. If you guys could go ahead and keep that tab open, we are actually going to come back to it a little bit later. So if you don't mind leaving that tab open and then just go ahead and come back to um, this live Pear Deck that we have here, um, we're going to go ahead and continue to move on, but we will revisit that um, page in just a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions after they've had a few minutes to look through? Um, I had a quick question about you having a link on the Pear Deck. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> so is that something you did on Google Slides or how did you add that link? I did. Yes, actually, these are Google Slides. And then um, after I created everything and I embedded the um, the links in there, then I just went in and, and created it as a Pear Deck. And so, yeah, you can go ahead and have those links in there. So if you do the link in the Google Slides, it'll automatically pop up on Pear Deck. Oh, OK, yes. cool. Thank you. So one disclaimer I will give, give you, and it used to not be this way before, Tina and I discovered it today. Um, let's say you have six class sessions or five class sessions, whatever it is. And let's say it's um, period two, you discover that you want to make a change. 
if you do make a change, you have to end the session and start a new one. So anytime you make a change to your slides, you need to make sure that you start a whole new session. Otherwise, the session will show what was on the old slide. So that was something that Tina and I learned today, and it wasn't like that before. So um, just a little quick tip if, if you ever are wondering what's going on. So we discovered that today. Okay, so we've had the chance to explore the site, and now we're going to dive into Immersive Reader. And this, by far, is um, my favorite piece that Pear Deck offers. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is explain to you that there's some really great reasons to utilize this piece. Um, you know, for our ELs, for our I students with IEPs, students with 504s, um, once we turn this Immersive Reader on, it automatically automatically appears on the slides. So the only added work that it's going to require from you guys is actually just to show your students where it's at and then show them the power and, and the opportunities that they have with it. So um, it's completely customizable and it provides some really great sca scaffolds for your students. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually give you guys um, a live um, experience um, with, um, sorry, with the immersive reader, if I could talk. Sorry about that. All right, let me go ahead and open this up. And what I did is I had mentioned earlier today that um, we were going to go to the Google Classroom. So I'm going to switch that tab over and show you um, where it's at. So under the Classworks tab here, um, you guys can just follow along. I haven't opened it up to you guys yet, but I will shortly. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the value of it, and then um, I'm going to let you guys explore with this as well. Okay, let me share this tab. All right, so this is a live pair deck here. And once you push it out to your students, I just took an excerpt from um, a small reader that I had used with my students in first grade. Um, and basically what it does is anytime that you embed any sort of text on here, um, it will actually read it once you turn it on. So when you present this to your students, this is the slides that they would receive. Again, this is I did this in Google Slides. And all they do is they come down to the bottom here where it says, um, you know, Sorry, my mouse is giving me issues today. Um, we are going to click right down here at the bottom and click on the book. And then it's actually going to open up the immersive reader. So there are some really great things here. So if you're satisfied with the way that this looks here with your students, all you would do is what is a yurt? yurt? A traditional, a traditional yurt, yurt or gur is, is affordable, round, round tent, tent covered, covered with, with skins, skins or, or felt, felt and, and used, used as, a as a dwelling by, by separate. Sep Okay, so you can see from that example that um, the students could go in and just read it as it is. But here's where the power is. So if you click here, you can increase the speed of the way she speaks. You can change it from a male to a female voice. You can decrease the speed size, uh, or the, the voice speed, excuse me. So if you have some ELs, let's say, and it's much easier for the, the text to be read at a slower pace, you have the ability to decrease that as well, or increase it if, if you felt that was necessary. But also, if you click up here at the top, you can do the same thing with the text size. So you can decrease it, you can increase it, you can increase and decrease the spacing of it as well. You can change the fonts and then you can also give it themes. So if you have any um, visually impaired students that may need, you know, some change in color of background or whatever, you can do that as well. And um, it will just read it this way. Okay. And then this piece right here is wonderful. So if you are working on syllabication with your students, you can turn this toggle on and it will show them how the word is read in by syllables. Um, if you also are working on parts of speech and grammar and you want them to be able to identify the nouns, the verbs, you just toggle this on and off. You do have the ability to change the color. So let's say, you know, in your class, you use a particular color for your nouns or your verbs, whatever it is, you can customize that as well. Uh, let's see here. 
And then this one is one piece that I love. Tina, did, was there a question in the chat? There is. Um, so Myra's asking, who has access to these options? Teachers, students, or both? Great question. Actually, it's both. So um, actually, when you open it up, it's it's for the students to customize. So let's say that you um, have a small group and you know this group needs something particular. You could go in and open up the Pear Deck for them and make these customizations that you want. And they should stay. I'm pretty sure that they stay. So let's say you went in and made the customizations for the student. Every time the immersive reader is open, it should stay the same. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, and then um, normally, oh, let me click one of these on here. So you can also click um, show the labels. So what it'll do is it'll give like the little, you know, um, letter to represent if it's a noun or a verb or something. So that's, that's what the show the labels is here. Okay, so you can turn this application off. And then um, over here under the third tab where the book is, um, this again is a really great scaffold for students who might be visually impaired um, or maybe have some ADHD. Um, you can design it so it's read line by line. So it just focuses in on that. You can do three lines or you can go all the way up to reading the entire paragraph. Um, this is another one of my favorite, favorite features right here is the picture dictionary. So again, for your ELs, um, let's say when you turn this on, if you click on this word, it will give you like how they, how they say it. So it'll read well, well, for them. But also, it, if it has a picture available, let me go to another section and see if that'll work better. Um, let me go down a little bit more. So door, for example, if they don't know what a door is and that's turned on, it will give them, okay, so I need to reread this word. It, they can click on it, it'll reread the word, but it also gives them a picture of what it is. Now, unfortunately, there's not pictures for everything, but um, if there is one available and you have that option turned on, then it is another great scaffolding pieces for many students or all students realistically. So this is actually one of my other um, favorite pieces about Immersive Reader. So again, a lot of customization that you can do for your students um, when you're here, um, you know, again, and, oh, Here's the other piece we didn't discuss, um, languages. So there are, I want to say it was 36 different languages that you can um, translate into. So if you have someone that um, doesn't speak English, but you want them to get the experience of the um, information that you're sharing, you do have the ability here to go through and change the languages. Okay, um, okay. Tina, do we have a question? I heard the... There's one more. So the immersive reader, does it need to be turned on for each slide or it's just an overall for the presentation? Great question. It's overall for the presentation. Yes. Okay. Because my question is I have an EL cluster mm -hmm. and it's kind of heartbreaking that they haven't been able to participate when I do Pear Deck. So they're just kind of do, 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 do while I go through it. And mm -hmm. if I now set it up with the immersive reader turned on and then use the link, the translate, then it will translate theirs or do Correct. they have to have it read to them translated? No. So you, what you would do is you would actually go to their computer and within their particular on their computer, their, their particular computer in that pair deck, you would make those customizations for them and then they would experience it in their language and the rest of the students would experience it in, in their own language. So they so. can turn it on and off on their individual computers then. So no, actually you have the power, you have all the power to turn on the immersive reader for them to have that experience. When it comes to the customization, they can, they, it's individualized. So I'm not sure what age group do you work with? A middle school science. You have middle school science. Okay. So yes, they can control, you know, you know, the language that it's in, but if, um, I hope I'm answering your question correctly. So they will they will change the language on their own computer, but they can change it. They can't turn it off. It will always be there, but um, they can change the customizations that you put in. I hope that makes sense. 
And Monica, to let you know, I was playing with it over here and you can look at the original and then the other language. So they can toggle back from the English to the Spanish, English to Spanish. So they're, they're not having to use the translate button every time. It already is on the very top. Yeah, and then like the great thing the, to, to piggyback on that, let me show you. So if I go down to Spanish here um, and I choose this version, I can choose to do it by just the word. So if I want to click on that, it gives you what the word is in English and then it gives you the word in Spanish or it can be the entire document. So um, and that's where you find that right here. So this one, I did it by word. And then this one, if I do it, it translates the entire document. So hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes it's easier to just play with it and show you. So well, I'm doing one tomorrow. So fingers crossed that it'll work. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And honestly, we're here for you. So if you have questions and um, you just shoot me an email and um, we can meet or I can answer your questions. So anytime you need help, we are here for you. Okay, um, any other questions? Just feel free to unmute yourself if you do have a question. Sorry, because I have a double screen. So sometimes it's hard for me to see the chat. So don't please don't think I'm ignoring you. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, Tina? Are we good? I have a quick question, hopefully. Sure. Yeah. So I haven't used Pear Deck very much. Um, in last year, I did a lot of Nearpod. So I know it's similar. But what I wanted to know is like, if I did this, which I think is an amazing thing for the students, but I have it on a slide deck that I use as a resource that they can like keep going back to every time. Mm -hmm. um, does it have to be an active session? I mean, like, how does that work for Pear Deck? Okay, so as long as you don't close the session when it's over, and you keep it open, they can they can continue to go back to that. So, um, I don't know if you remember from the beginning, or I can show you at the end of this, but basically if you keep your session open on the main page, which I'll show you when we get back to the main website, how you access those. Um, right. Yeah. So as long as you keep it open, they can use it as a resource. But okay, again, if you're, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, but if you, if you are, again, as we discovered today, if you're making changes to the slides, they won't get those updated changes unless you end it and reopen it. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. The other Anybody thing, else? it has to be on student pace. If you have instructor pace, it wouldn't work. Good point, thank you for bringing that up. Yes, if, you, if they are working on it independently, it needs to be in student pace. If you're doing it in class, instructor pace is good. Is good. Um, that way you can control where they're at in the lesson, yes. Thank you for mentioning that. So um, what I would like to do is, um, you know, give you guys a couple of minutes to, um, you know, explore. I'll give you guys like three minutes. If you want to go to the Google Classroom and follow this link and open it up, it is open just to give you guys a few minutes to play with it um, and experience it and see how it would benefit you. I did add a couple of other slides in here. It's just so that, um, you know, you can see, you know, you give them the paragraph, they read it and listen to it and then, you um, this is just one way that I used in the class. So they would write me a juicy sentence and then um, they would give me a drawing of a yurt. So um, anyways, if you guys want to take about three minutes to explore and see, um, you know, different ways that you can use it with your students, um, please take that time. And again, um, unmute yourself if you guys have questions. OK, so hopefully you guys had a chance to, um, you know, experience it for a few minutes and see um, the value for your students. So what I want to do is show you guys how do you guys get access to this. So remember how earlier I had asked you guys to keep that tab open um, to the Pear Deck website. So if you could go ahead and click back to the Pear Deck website tab. <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we will click up here um, underneath your name. Um, there's that little arrow that's pointing down. Just click on this. And then we're going to click on my account. And then this shows that um, we do have the free premium account. And then if you click right here on settings, this is where the power is. So all you're going to do is just go ahead and make sure that this toggle for immersive reader is turned on. And then now your students will have um, 
immersive reader available um, anytime you open a Pear Deck. Um, it is in beta form still, as you can see here. So they are doing um, things to improve it and, and they will make changes. So um, don't be alarmed if something is there now and gone, but you see something new because they still are updating it and changing it. So um, really that's all you needed to do is um, turn this on here. And then again, share with your students once you push it out um, that it is available to them and how they would use it. Okay, and then um, earlier, Jennifer, you had asked about the sessions. So since we're here um, on the website now, um, up here at the top, we have the home and then we have the sessions button right here. So if you click on that, it will show you um, where your sessions currently are. So for example, this is the one that we're doing live right now. And then um, I had one earlier today that is closed which means no one can access it anymore. And then as Christine had mentioned to us, um, she had talked about the student paste versus the um, teacher paste. If it's in student paste, it's going to be blue and that will show right here. Um, when it's live, um, this one you can see it's an instructor paste, otherwise it would, would have said student paste. So if you have sessions that you have done before and you wanna go back and reopen them, then um, this is where you will come to do that. And then this actually kind of transitions um, into um, the next phase of what we're gonna discuss today, and that is the takeaways. So um, when you do the takeaways, um, you can also come here to send it to them. But before I get ahead of myself, I do wanna go back to the presentation so that I can kind of explain to you guys about that. So, oh, oh, I do have one other question that I want to ask you about Immersive Reader. Um, so now that you guys have had a chance to see it, can you guys share with me what your favorite part of Immersive Reader is? And um, if you guys want to share anything about that, that would be great too. Okay, the ability to translate into the student's primary language, the translations, yeah, the dictionary with pictures, I like that too. They can customize it themselves. Technology is okay. translation, the vocabulary piece, syllabication, yeah. But yeah, that pretty much summarizes it. Yeah, um, this is definitely my favorite component of um, Pear Deck. I mean, the collaboration is great and the engagement is, is phenomenal. But yeah, I think Immersive Reader is, is great as well. So now let's go ahead and dive into um, student takeaways. So um, student takeaways is great because if you are using um, your Pear Deck um, as a lesson, um, it gives them the opportunity to receive their responses back in a Google Doc form. So um, if you guys can go ahead and take a moment and click on this and watch the video individually, we'll come back together in about two minutes and um, dive a little deeper into your welcome. After students have left all these insightful, insightful answers, answers, you probably want to, want to give them a record, record of their work, their work to review later. later. That's, That's what Pear Deck, Deck student, student takeaways are for. First, First make, make sure, sure to end, end your session and name it. it. Consider, Consider including the class name, name section, section, and date for easy categorization. Make, make sure, to sure to check, to check the box, box that says Publish Student Takeaways. When you publish student takeaways, you'll get a link to a brand new folder in Google Drive. Inside that folder will be a personal document for each student who joined the session. The documents have already been shared with the appropriate student and an email has been sent to them. You can also paste the link in your LMS. When a student clicks the link, it will take them directly to their personal document. For homework, you can tell students to review their takeaway and reflect on what was challenging or what they learned in the spaces provided.
Anytime you want to find your takeaways, you can look in your drive for your takeaways folder. The takeaways are always grouped by presentation and date. You can leave student feedback by leaving a comment in the doc. You can also share the doc with parents or tutors to help them better guide the student outside of class. So, come on. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's the thing that is in order for your students to be able to access um, the takeaways, you are you need to make sure that you end the session. And so you can end it immediately as soon as you hit the end button at the bottom. So you guys can see like down here um, on my screen. Oh, sorry, get my mouse going. Um, down here, when you end your Pear Deck, it'll give you the option to say, you know, do you want to do it now or do you want to keep it open? Um, if you decide to keep it open and you want to close it later, you would go back to the main website under that sessions tab, and that's where you would end it. So I included um, the step-by-step -step images um, for you guys to be able to see how to do that. Um, the other thing is, is that it, in the video, it referenced emailing it to the students. You can do that. Or the other option now, which is an upgrade, is to embed it directly into Google Classroom. So it will allow you to send it to the students and they will only receive their version, not anyone else's. So um, it is individualized for them. So you can either email them the link or you can um, directly share it in Google Classroom as an assignment. Um, and again, they showed us before, um, you know, if you're choosing to do it in your drive from a later on, you go to your drive, find your Pear Deck folder, and then you're going to find your takeaways. And you can um, leave the comments and those sort of things for your students. And um, just to give you an idea of what it would look like, um, one of our sessions, I think it was Pear Deck 101 actually, where we um, did the dog with the pineapple and that sort of thing. So when the student receives the responses, this is what it looks like at the top. So it, it says what the name of the session was, and then it gives the student's name and their information. It also includes a box right here at the top, which is a summary box. This is actually for the students. So let's say you end the session and they get that and they want to go back and they want to add notes about um, something that they forgot to put in or a change or something like that. Um, this is where the students can add a summary for themselves um, when they receive the document later. And then um, down below, um, it shows them what the question was and then it shows them how they responded to each individual question. So um, here um, we have a few more minutes, so I'll just show you guys this quickly. Um, this is a takeaway sample, so hopefully this link works. This is the struggle that Tina and I had earlier. So if you want to go ahead and click on this link right here, hopefully it works. I'm going to share it with you guys now in the tab. And um, I'll just go ahead and click on this. But if you guys wouldn't mind just um, answering these three questions, then I'm going to show you guys um, how you would end the session and then how you would share it with your students. And then I'm going to share it in the Google Classroom so that you guys can receive it and see what it actually looks like. So go ahead and take a minute and just answer those quick three questions. And again here, I will mention this. Um, if you notice, the immersive reader is um, available on these slides also. So it will read any text that is there for them also. So it's not just, um, it's basically for all the slides is my point. Okay, so hopefully you guys have had a chance to um, answer those questions. And so once you end the session, this is what you will receive. So it's telling you that this was a student paced mode lesson. And then it automatically gives you the option to um, click the, the link or to share it with a Google Classroom. Okay. Here it comes. Okay. So I click end. And then, um, yes, I'm sure I want to end this. Okay. And then I'm going to give it a name and I'll just call it sample today or I'll just call it PD sample. 201. I'm going to save and end it. 
Okay, so this is what comes up and it's the reflect in the review. So um, if you wanted to generate the takeaways right here, you could do that. Or, and this is where you share it with the Google Classroom. Okay, so um, if you click on the generate it, you can publish the takeaways for this session. And again, it becomes a document with the information. So we click on that. And here is where it is. So this again gives you the option to um, use this link to email to the students. And again, when you email this, it will only be sent to that individual student. So it won't be given to everyone. Everyone won't have, it, have access to each other's. Or you can share it in the Google Classroom. So we click on that. You guys should now be able to go to the Google Classroom um, and you should be able to access your takeaways. So let me take a look at this and view it. Well, let me share this tab with you. So under the Classworks tab, it should be takeaways right here. And if you click on that assignment, it should be your responses um, that you provided within that lesson. Does anyone have any questions? I feel like I'm whipping through this, but to be cognizant of your guys' time, I want to make sure that um, I touch as many bases as I can. Okay. Abby, you had a question? Um, I opened like the takeaways. Is it does it usually take a while for the takeaways to like generate? Yeah, great question. It may take a few minutes um, to do it. So in about 15, 20 minutes, if it doesn't, if it doesn't come up, send me an email and I'll, I'll figure out what happened to it. But yeah, you should be receiving it. And again, I don't know, this, the computer is moving super slow. It took about five minutes for me to even open this Pear Deck today. So I don't know if that's contributing to it today or not, but they should have it within 15, 20 minutes. Okay. I have a question. Yes. <clears throat> so if I start playing with this and it's not doing what I want it to, can we email you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And um, you can email me and I also have um, the Calendly listed. So if you wanted to do like a, a meet with me, we could do that also. And we could do okay. step by step. So feel free to, to shoot me an email and we will um, set that up. And as I thought, um, <laughs> As I had shared with you guys earlier today, I didn't think we were going to make it to the teacher dashboard. So um, my intention is to um, provide another Pear Deck PD where we will dive deeper into the teacher dashboard, as well as take a look at the flashcard factory, which is found within the website, which that was another great tool that um, I used with my younger students. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip through this. If you guys wanted to, I left the resources here. So if you wanted to take a look at um, this information independently, it is um, loaded here within the slides. But to be respectful of your guys's time, um, I'll go ahead and open up um, any questions that you guys might have now. Thank you guys all for coming. I appreciate it. And don't hesitate to reach out. And if you guys find or discover something amazing um, that you would love to share, we would love to hear also on, in ways that you're using um, Pear Deck with your kids.